What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 10. And we start on today's episode off with the FA Cup semi-final against Liverpool at Wembley, first semi-final of the save. Obviously we forfeited the Europa League this year or we basically didn't play it uh, due to keeping things realistic. And of course in the Carabao Cup we were knocked out early by Fulham. So first we've gone in a cup competition in our debut year, reaching the semi-final. This is the stage where the board wanted us to get to this season, reaching the final four. Southampton vs Arsenal is the other semi-final tie. But I've got to be honest, heading into this game, despite being massive underdogs against Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, I felt very confident coming on the back of four straight victories and four straight clean sheets in the Premier League to keep us in the hunt for Champions League football. We might be taking on one of the best teams in the world, let alone England, but I felt strangely optimistic that this could be a game where we have a 90 minutes to remember and a place in the FA Cup final. Heading into the game though, against Liverpool, we've got two of the top scorers in the league right now in Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah, and it was the latter that would give them the lead just 14 minutes in. Worst possible start at Wembley as the Egyptian king fires Klopp's side into an early lead. And on the back of four straight clean sheets, we got the best defensive record in the division. Our game has been built on solid defending this year. So on the biggest stage in the biggest game of the season to go a goal down 15 minutes in from a simple little knockoff by Firmino to Salah with two Wolves players around him. That was really frustrating indeed. Into the corner from the Egyptian, Mo Salah gives the Reds the lead. But despite going down a goal early, we'd looked really good inside the first 25 minutes. We almost found an instant leveller four minutes later. A Dama Traore bending one off the post as Liverpool then blocked the follow-up shot and managed to get the danger clear as it was still 1-0. And we had looked, in my opinion, the better team in the first half an hour. We'd looked comfortable on the ball and looked threateningly going forward. And particularly a Dama Traore was causing Trent Alexander-Arnold a lot of problems down the left-hand side. Rolled it across to Jimenez there but totally spurned the chance. Should have kept on going instead. Looked for the Mexican as it was still 1-0. We stayed in attack mode, stayed optimistic, kept on looking for the chances, most importantly kept on feeding a down with Trey or he was going to have the best player on the pitch in the first half of the game and as Ruben Neves fouled Raul Jimenez the Mexican found our level with five minutes to go and if we were going to get an equalising goal and get back on level terms it was going to be through one of Traore or Sanchez or Raul Jimenez. In the end, it was the Mexican beast. Nice little dummy to sell Joe Gomez and drills it in to the back of the net. Hits it low, hits it hard, hits it past Allison and into the back of the net for our level, which we definitely deserved as well. In the first half, we were a far better team and in particular, this man was sublime. Adama Traore, I switched him to the left for this game with Nato on the right and what a decision as well. He ran the show in the first half really. Trent could not cope with the Spaniard and unfortunately, right before the break, he would have had a golden chance to get us in front for the first time and the referee blew the half-time whistle as soon as he got into the area. I was so, so frustrated about that. Either way, he had the right to call it as it was still 1-1 heading to the dressing room and in the second half, five minutes after the restart, talk about a sucker punch. We played so well in the first half and particularly closed out the first half really strong as well. I felt we had momentum right before the half-time whistle before Traore was going to go for goal, it should be said. And then five minutes after the restart, Naby Keita puts Liverpool back in front as the Reds restart store their lead. So 2-1 and despite looking the better team in the first half, in the second half Liverpool came out all guns blazing and really flipped the switch. You know there are some games where class teams just turn it up a gear, just kick it up a notch and just look far far better and play a much higher intensity. That was how the second half started. In the first half I thought we were the better team but in the second half 15 minutes after the restart Bobby Firmino doubles their lead as they get themselves a two goal cushion in the game. Quick little drag back by Naby K2 really was running the show in the middle of the park in the second half for Liverpool. Plays it across the face of the six-yard area from two goals out. Firmino was not going to miss that as he puts Liverpool two goals up. It's 3-1. Hadn't started the second half off at all, really. It barely got going, so we needed to respond and get ourselves back in the game. I mean, would through that man, Adama Traore, having one of his best performances of the season there, getting us back in the game, reducing the deficit to make it 3-2. But despite the goal, I just could not create any more chances after that. And as Liverpool was still leading by one, with 10 seconds of normal time remaining. Divock Origi off the bench for Firmino, finds a pocket of space, beats Connor Cody with the Ronaldo chop and puts it past Gazaniga at the near post to wrap it up as Liverpool will progress to the FA Cup final and a relief on Klopp's face as well because we gave him a really, really good challenge in this game. We did 
did not turn up, roll over and let our tummies get tickled by the far superior team. We went at them, we did our very best, but unfortunately just didn't have enough in the end. And to concede with every single shot that was on target as well. I don't want to point fingers at Gazaniga. He couldn't really have done much about any of the goals, to be fair. But either way, that's always so frustrating when the AI score of every single shot on target. But yeah, 4-2 the final score. I think the scoreline a little bit harsh and us did not play that badly at all. But it was kind of surprising as well because, you know, our game has been built on solid defense all throughout the course of the campaign. That's the first time this season we've conceded four in a game and it comes in the biggest game of the season on the biggest stage. So, so, so frustrating. But not, not a bad performance at all. I thought it was a really even game. Could have gone either way. Unfortunately, though, just didn't take the chance we had in the first half to get ourselves in front hands to break, which I think we really should have done. Regardless, it'll be a Southampton versus Liverpool final as the Saints knocked out Arsenal in the semi final. So our progress in the FA Cup is over at the semis. And as you can see in the Premier League with four games to go as we're now into May, we are currently nine points behind Chelsea in fourth place, 10 points behind the Red Devils in third, though we do have the game in hand, and six behind Spurs in fifth, though we also have the game in hand there as well. We're four clear of Everton in seventh and 13 clear of Arsenal in eighth. So Europa League football is pretty much guaranteed now. But as for the Champions League, I think the only way we make it now is if we win all of our remaining four games and the teams of well slip up at least once or possibly, in fact, think about it, twice in the remaining four games, which really is incredibly incredibly unlikely. I said the last episode, we're not going to give up until it's mathematically impossible, but now I think reality has kicked in. We'll be playing Europa League football next year and not Champions League football. And so for the second game of today's episode here, taking on the Baggies, the Boing Boing Baggies in a West Midlands derby. Right now, rock bottom of the table and basically already relegated to the Championship. I thought this was going to be a really routine and easy victory for us. The easiest of our four final games, that's for sure. But instead, it finished up as a goalless draw in one of the toughest games I've played all season long. Great to return with another clean cheat on the back conceding four at Wembley, but I had one shot on target in the entire game. That was Nelson Semedo right before the first half uh, first half came to its close. West Brom had 60% of possession in the game, and I just could not break them down whatsoever. It seems like whenever I come up a team playing against five at the back, I always struggle to get chances. That is kind of natural, but that was just one of those games there unfortunately I just couldn't get any opportunities created whatsoever so that officially ends it now any chance whatsoever of making a Champions League required us winning four straight to end the season off to draw the first of four at home to rock bottom and relegated West Bromwich Albion well that was it it was over and that was mathematically confirmed as well no more chances we will not be playing Champions League football next year and instead providing Southampton don't be Liverpool in the FA Cup final or we finish in six we will have Europa League football at Molyneux next season. So for the third and final game of today's episode and the first of the remaining three in the Premier League, we will take on Manchester United away at Old Trafford. They themselves are trying to cling on to a Champions League place to end the season off as well. We had the first chance of the game. Jao Moutinho's through ball met by Raul Jimenez with an excellent the post as it was still goalless. And soon after that, Shiro Immobile, the Italian striker who was signed from Lazio in the January transfer window, fired the Red Devils into the lead as they went a goal off. And I was thinking, not again, seriously, not a game where we play really well against one of the big boys but sadly don't take our chances and we get punished well 32 minutes in it was looking like that would be the case once more Paul Pogba sent forward and the French midfielder drilling it past Patricio to make it 2-0 as Manchester United took a very commanding lead in the first half where we really unlike at Wembley hadn't got started whatsoever so two goals down but we still did have some chances in the first half and right before the break once again I switched a Dama Traore out to the left wing heading into the game and I've got to say whilst his list of positions are right wing and right wing back he's had a lot of assists down the right flank but I quite like him on the left hand side he got the goal there to get us back in the game right before the break stepping in field and making it 2-1 and five minutes after the restart trying to get back on level terms here Jimenez firing this shot just over the bar as it was still 2-1 and we'd really woken up after a very very poor start indeed. 20 minutes after the half-time mark, still trailing by a goal, playing out from the back with Patricio here, Semedo plays into the feet of Pablo, Nato getting a start on the right-hand side, as Moutinho finds Jimenez, through to Nelson Semedo, a nice little build-up sees the Mexican spot to runner Sanchez, great friend through ball to the Portuguese midfielder, stops on a dime, beats Gerard Piquet, and oh, the coolest of finishes from Sanchez. I'll be honest here, at Wembley, I did not have a good game controlling Renato Sanchez. He's been amazing all season long, but I was 
really poor with him in the FA Cup semi-final. But this goal here, absolutely glorious. Jimenez to Sanchez, one-on-one, -on -one, PK covering, stops, turns, shoots and clips both posts on his way to finding the back of the net. And when that goal went in, I physically fist-pumped, dropped the control in one hand, physically fist-pumped and I was like, yeah, about bloody time we get a bit of luck there as Sanchez makes it 2-2. Back on level turns, battling back from two goals down with eight minutes to go. Pablo Nato getting the start in this game, gives us the game winner with his first of the season. It runs to travelling fans in the corner by the Tavoli Charlton stand as we go from two goals down to 3-2 up in the comeback of the season. Nutmegs David Haya and finds the back of the net as from two goals down we win it in the closing stages. What a comeback from Wolves and we so sorely need it as well. You know, losing to uh, Liverpool in the FA Cup semi-final 4-2, absolutely heartbreaking. Very poor goal to draw at home to rock bottom and surely relegated one out at this stage, relegated West Bromwich Albion. Absolutely atrocious. To lose this game as well would have been a disaster and a terrible way to end the season, but to come back and win it 3-2, that was, that was a nice feeling. It's a shame it counted for basically nothing whatsoever, but it was still really nice to know we came back from really, really poor, uh, poor start to the game to win it 3-2 with one of our best performances of this season. Shame it counts for nothing though, because we're locked in sick for two games to go. Can't finish lower, can't finish higher. But that was this episode of the Realistic Karuma, guys. So big fan you've watched really if you have. Enjoy it if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the season finale, which I think I'll do tonight as well. There are remaining two games, there's nothing to play for. We're locked in sick, we'll definitely finish there. So we'll do the remaining uh, games today. Do this uh, do the season finale tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll have a double upload to close out the season. Thanks for watching, much love to you all, and I'll see you for the season finale later on tonight.